Let's look at how a sequence of events can lead to serious digestive health issues in a horse and the important role of the hindgut in this process. The horse's hindgut includes the large intestine, comprised of the cecum and the colon. Like humans, horses cannot digest fiber, but here in the hindgut of the horse, millions of bacteria and other microorganisms ferment the structural carbohydrates that make up fiber, converting them to volatile fatty acids, which the horse can digest. These VFAs represent the most important source of energy for the horse. Of course, our horses today have less fiber in their diets. They're fed concentrates such as processed grain, pellets, or sweet feed with less opportunity for turnout. The lack of constant grazing, the lack of fiber in the diet, the high content of simple sugars and starches in processed feed all contribute to digestive imbalance. Without the constant flow of fibrous grass feed and saliva, the acid in the stomach is left unbuffered. This has been shown to create conditions that may lead to stomach ulcers. Meanwhile, processed feeds can reach the hindgut undigested, especially when they're consumed quickly. Here the microorganisms in the cecum and colon convert simple sugars and starches into lactic acid, which can lead to a condition called hindgut acidosis. An excess of lactic acid can alter the natural pH balance in the hindgut. A more acidic environment can shift the balance of normal microorganisms and pathogenic bacteria. This can ultimately lead to colonic ulcers, when pathogenic bacteria colonize around compromised areas of the mucosal lining of the colon, such as pits left by parasites. If these ulcers are severe and include significant blood loss, you may find the horse is suffering from a low-grade anemia. Worse yet, the body responds to significant blood loss by constricting arteries that supply blood to the affected area. The anterior mesenteric artery is an important source of blood to the colon. Severe bleeding colonic ulcers that result in the constriction of this artery may result in necrosis of colonic tissue. Necrotic tissue, literally dead tissue, will reduce peristalsis, the muscular movements that move feed matter along. This may ultimately lead to impaction colic. Is this common? Well, certainly we know that the incidence of gastric and colonic ulcers in performance horses is extremely high, and we know that colic is the number one killer of horses. We also know that how we feed and care for our horses today is very different from even a hundred years ago. Yet the digestive tract remains the same, complex, delicate system. If this entire system, including both the foregut and hindgut, is not considered in this context, conditions will persist that create this chain of physiological events that can ultimately lead to colic and ulcers.